Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well. I am outside on the porch. Finally the weather feels like summer here. I am not sure how you guys are experiencing weather, but it has been the craziest here. We have gone from like a winter to a cold spring. The weather has been crazy and finally it's sunny here. It's warm outside. I am so happy to be back out here. I love to sit out here, have my coffee, use my little notebook, go through some of my ideas, plan out my day, whatever it may be, or my week, and just sit out here and connect a little bit with nature. You can hear the birds, you can hear people, you can hear lawnmowers, the whole works here. And I don't mind, I hope you guys don't mind as well hearing all the sounds. I did ask on my community tab if there were any DIYs you guys wanted to see or any videos on the channel, and a lot of you requested porch decor. One thing I don't really do a lot of videoing, um, I have my little chairs out here. I keep things quite simple, but I thought I would share with you how I repurposed and used some previous things like this little vase here. I actually, um, you'll probably recognize it. I've done a couple of them on the channel, but this one here, recently I had done something for spring with it. And it actually, you can even see a little bit, has the, um, the discoloring, because uh, it was cream. And I'm like, you know what? I feel like having some pops of blue out here. So I painted that one and uh, and I showed you exactly how I did that and then this sign talking about signs. You guys probably heard me talking a little bit about practicing hand lettering through the Skillshare app and this vo video has been sponsored. Thank you to Skillshare. They are huge community supporter of this platform as well. I'm not sure if you've heard of them before but they are an app and they have over 25,000 classes that range from design to business, videography. I have even taken productivity classes. I absolutely enjoyed those. And I have been working on my lettering so that I could practice and get better for DIYs and not have to use like stencils or my Cricut machine or a hack like I did for this one here because I didn't even use my Cricut machine for this one. I'll show you exactly how I did it. But I wanted to let you guys know about Skillshare because I think it would really benefit many of you to take a peek at their app. They have provided the first 500 members that follow the description down below two free months. Now they are super affordable. It's no more than $10 a month for an annual subscription. So they have this premium membership that gives you access to a ton of classes to fuel your creativity your curiosity and even your career so i definitely highly recommend them i've been so happy that they've been able to provide me um, with classes on there and just i know a couple of you have even been taking some of their classes and have been practicing your lettering so i do know that they have a lot to offer so definitely take a peek by following the link in the description below and they are offering two free months for you guys to take a look anyways back to my diy so I was practicing and I still am not feeling confident enough to do that hand lettering so I did a bit of a manipulation I, I, I don't know if you could call it a hack but definitely making it a little easier for you to make your own signs at home uh, a lot of this stuff that I have here has been repurposed I have been trying it's one thing I've been doing as well is trying to limit the intake of things and consuming things and bringing them in the house and then discarding of them so for example I will have made this cute vase for spring and then I'm like well I want to change the color rather than you know donating it or throwing it away i just painted over it or a picture frame that maybe you're not using anymore or a few picture frames putting them together and making something per useful and then the sign here i actually had bought this bundle of wood from home depot it's no more than ten dollars it comes with a ton i've actually done some other diys on the channel with it and i had a ton left over so i thought why not make a cute sign super affordable you can use planks from the dollar tree um, they do sell some at the Dollar Tree so definitely peek at your store if you have access to wood but if not I think that this is a little more feasible or even buying a piece of pine pre-cut pine uh, board at the uh, at a home hardware store of some sort would definitely be feasible for you as well but anyways definitely take a peek at the Skillshare link in the description down below and I hope you enjoy this tutorial so for this first DIY I wanted to make a really nice large kind of rustic nautical lantern so i'm using four of these eight by ten picture frames from the dollar tree 
And this is definitely um, something you can repurpose. Like if you've created something else with frames, this is the time to bring them together. So what I'm going to do is take off all of the backing and remove all the internal parts. The only thing I really need is actually the glass and the bordered frame. Now I wanted to paint it um, a cream rusty color. So I'm using some acrylic paint from the Dollar Tree and I'm mixing an antique white and just like a white. Definitely so that it takes away that yellow tint, but adds in a little bit more of this cream, cream color, if that makes sense. Make enough that you're going to have enough paint to paint four of these frames. This is one thing I wish I had done, I'm going to tell you right now. Paint the external part of the frame, sorry, the front of the frame and the back entirely. So don't skip out the process of painting the back. That's something I completely forgot to do. And then I was, once I was putting it together, I was like, oh no, this is a hot mess. So paint the top outer part of the frame, flip it over and paint the inner part, not just the sides here, go all the way around the inner part, even where the, the glass is gonna be back and inserted into the frame, please paint it all the same. Don't leave any black, don't leave any silver, paint it all one color, make sure everything is one even painted frame. So now I have it all coated with this one layer of paint. I wanted to stress a little bit. So I'm gonna take a piece of sandpaper from the Dollar Tree and I'm just gonna rub it like along certain areas just to give this distressed look. And you'll see that it'll pick up a little bit of the color in behind. You don't need to rub too much of the acrylic paint, just a little bit just to give it that look. And um, I mean, if you want a little bit harder distressing, go for it. But now I'm just gonna remove, remember all of this is supposed to be painted, nothing is supposed to be black. <laughs> so remove all of the little metal knobs or nibs that hold in the glass pane. So you wanna remove all of these. And now you're going, once everything is dry, of course, you're gonna have all of these painted. There's not gonna be any black showing. And what you're gonna do is apply some E6000. You're gonna run a nice even bead right on that inner part there of the frame. I usually like using a little couple dabs of hot glue as well, just to secure things in place because E6000 does take 24 hours to bond and hot glue just immediately dries. So I'm gonna put two little dots of hot glue in the little corners and that will hold the glass right in, in place. So then you just place that back in and now you'll have your four frames should be ready to go. Now this is where I'm showing you I made a big mistake here, not painting all the inside as you can see. So what I'm going to do is take actually a sponge brush and paint this all in just to kind of make it look more even. I cannot believe I missed this step. I was so frustrated with myself because then the 6000 had already bonded the glass. I couldn't even lift things up and I was so happy I was going to go put things out on the porch and I'm like, oh, this doesn't look very nice. So let's pretend that these frames are completely painted um, because this was, you know, the, the first step of putting them together and then I realized, oh my goodness, there was so much black on the inside and I, I really wanted everything to be this kind of creamy white. So how I'm going to put these together, um, this is really easy because these frames kind of like, they kind of slant on the sides. So they, oh, they work out so nicely. So I run a nice even bead of hot glue here and then I just connect the two frames just like this. So these are wonderful from the Dollar Tree. Now if you have square ones, you'll find that one side kind of overlaps a little bit. Um, I have made a candle holder on the channel with square flat ones and um, I will link it up above if you want to see how I glued those together. But this one works out so nicely because of the way there's the slant on the sides of the frames. So if you want, you can run nice um, amount of E6000 as well to completely bond these and then allow the the glues all to dry for 24 hours hot glue is pretty immediate but e6000 is goopy and it does take about 24 hours to bond this is these are the four frames all glued together and they make a perfect 
perfect square. I absolutely love the cube effect that this has created. I just really do wish I had painted all of the inside prior to putting this all glued together. However, in the end, it turned out super cute. So I wanted to make a bit of a nautical rope. And so you'll see here, I'm taking a string of the rope from the Dollar Tree. You wanna cut actually one side much, much longer, maybe even three or four times the length. And then I'm just gonna make a little loop on the top and I'm gonna start wrapping. I am 100% confident there is another technique to doing this. I just don't know. Um, there's probably a million techniques to doing this. I just don't know one. And I really wanted to have a bit of like that nautical, a chunky effect. So <laughs> I manipulated this string or rope, whatever you wanna call this stuff, um, and made this out of it. So what you do is just keep looping it around the one piece and uh, and gluing it. I just kept using hot glue and made sure it was all secure and it turned out super cute. And then I just, uh, my camera actually died here, but um, as I was hot gluing the nautical in rope inside of the lantern, um, I don't know why I lost the footage, but I just wanted to show you here. So I glued it into two, two areas and I have one and I think I can actually make another one for the other side. So you can do the same. And this is the finished look, which I think is super cute. So the nautical rope hangs there. And again, you can have one on the back end if you'd like, but at least it's away from the candles as well because you don't want that to catch fire. So that's what it looks like on my patio. And now I'm going to take you guys on to the next step, which is actually I repurposed the old vase that I used for, sp uh, for my spring decor. And it's this blue one now. So I'm going to show you how I made this. And um, that's also from the Dollar Tree. You can find a ton of glass vases there. But isn't this so cute, the nautical kind of roping? It's got that really chunky effect. So to create this, I'm using acrylic paints again from the Dollar Tree. All I'm doing is using a really deep blue, um, a vibrant blue. And then I put in a little dab of black just to thicken up this blue a little bit and um, I don't know, make it more nautical colored. So. I'm going to paint my vase that was originally this cream color. I'm going to coat this. It's going to take actually two coats. So one coat and then you're going to allow this to dry and then you're going to do a second coat and you're going to allow that to dry overnight because then you want to distract. Well, you don't have to, but in my case, I wanted to distress it. So I wanted to make sure that the, the acrylic paint was completely dry. So here it is completely dry. And I'm going to take some sandpaper and I lost footage again. Don't ask me what I was doing with my camera, but you want to distress it by just rubbing it back and forth. And then wherever you want, you can actually rub all the way through till glass appears, or you can have it where I see how I have that cream in behind. You have a little bit of color discoloring just like that. I absolutely love the blues. I am right into blue lately. So for the next uh, DIY, we're going to build together this porch sign. It is made of these, I don't even know what this wood is called. I know somebody's told me before and I always forget. We'll call it planks. You can find planks at the Dollar Tree. However, I had this big bundle that I didn't spend a ton of money on from Home Depot and I I just keep thinking like how can I use this stuff I had some ideas and so I thought I'm gonna glue these together and I'm gonna make a really cute sign for you guys as well and show you because you asked me for a porch decor so I hope this inspires you guys and it's super affordable so what you want to do is have the back all glued to two pieces here so I'm going to use some wood glue and you can find wood glue as well at the Dollar Tree right now and I'm just going to secure all the planks crisp like across across two pieces like this I'm going to put some weight on top and I'm going to allow this to dry overnight so that the glue bonds with the wood and then I can do some of the hand lettering on it so I printed some of these off Microsoft Word then I align them on the wood the way I would like it. And now we're gonna use this little trick that I've used on the channel before. With a chalk marker um, from the Dollar Tree, you wanna outline the letters because that's all you're going to need is to trace some of this white chalk right on to one of the planks. You'll see exactly what I mean in a second. The actual easiest way to do this is put your piece of white paper on top of another piece of white paper. You'll be able to see your printed letters a lot better 
or you can lean it up against a window, whichever is easiest. I keep lifting it up, but you can definitely shortcut this. So see how I've only outlined the L? I haven't colored it all in. I don't need to waste my chalk. Now I'm gonna show you what's gonna happen. So once you're done um, with the page, obviously you need to make sure your entire page is completed. Just line up the lettering um, how you'd like, how the words are going to be on your, you know, the layout and stuff. So just figure out how much space, at least for the first page, make sure that you have it in the right spot. Now you're going to take a pencil and all you're going to do is trace the outer part of each of these letters. And just like magic, you're going to have stencils that you're going to then paint in um, each and every one of these letters. This takes a little bit more time, of course, than a stencil itself, because with a stencil, you can just kind of paint right over it. For this technique, you're going to be left with this. I hope it helps because I know cutting stencils is quite tedious as well. So now I, I have done, I'm going to do the same. See how when you put it on top of a white piece of paper, you can see the letters a lot easier. So that's all. You're just going to trace out these letters, transfer word by word onto your wood sign and now it's ready for painting. I actually had a lot of fun painting. I know it kind of sounds silly, but I, it was very therapeutic. Like I took my white paint and I dipped my brush in. I had some music playing and, um, and I just went slowly but surely just follow the lines, filling each and every one. And there's just something about it that was like, wow, finally just comes kind of to life right on that board. So here you'll see that I do one coat and then once I'm happy with, well, I will allow it to dry and then I'll examine all of the letters and if they're not white enough on the board because the wood soaks up some of the acrylic paint, I just go back and fill it over another coat of white paint. Some of the letters turned out a little brighter than others, but you'll see that I go back once it's all dry and I do another layer quickly of white paint. And the second layer is super quick because you're not having to do each and every little fine detail. You're just kind of going over the bigger surface areas and painting over it just like this. I absolutely love the way this came out. I think it's so cute and rustic on my porch, but kind of has that nautical feel. I'm all about the beach lately. So I wet a little cotton towel and I'm dipping it in the white acrylic paint and all I'm doing is distressing the board just to give it a little more dimension so you'll see here I work and blend in some of the paints just make sure your cloth is a little bit damp not soaking wet and then you can just it's kind of like magic like erasing the paint off the, the boards and then I take a little bit more and I give it a little more white on certain areas and then I even take some paint and I dab the sides to accent and give a little bit more of a border. Totally up to you if you want to skip this or do it. I just love the way it looks. It kind of finishes off the sign, gives it a little bit more of like a professional look maybe. I'm not sure. Maybe it looks messy. I don't know. It just looks weather worn and I love it. So I have one more to share with you and it is a super simple one that I've shared a few times on the channel which is placemat DIY pillows. So here are the two things together and see how they tie in one another. They're just they just go so nicely like it just looks incomplete without my little lantern on the side all by its lonesome here and then the lantern kind of comes in together and it ties it all in. Okay, here is the pillow DIY. I've used two placemats, some pillow filling, and hot glue for this project. I've taken all the tags off the placemat, and I've now unstitched the area in the middle here as an entrance for my hand to be able to fit in and fill it with filling all the way in the back of the placemat. This project I've actually upcycled an older pillow, taken some of the fluff out of it, refluffed it up, and filled my placemat with it. Once I finished filling the pillows, I then took some hot glue and resealed the area with hot glue. Now be careful because this is super hot on your fingers so I've used some finger protectors to work with it. The glue dries pretty quickly so just work as best as you can here in straightening it out, 
running your finger along the glue actually helps it seal really nicely. Cut off the threads that were just hanging and that's it, the pillows were complete. Use them as decor, maybe for a trip in the car. You can take them to the beach or you can even put them on your patio. You can flip reverse them because they do have two sides, usually a printed and a plain. So it's completely up to you how you would like to set them up. I absolutely love them. They're very practical and I really hope that you're able to make some with whatever print that inspires you. I hope you guys enjoy these simple DIYs outside for your porch or even for indoors, of course, or patio, front door, whichever suits your needs. But until next time, everyone, thank you so very much for watching and I look forward to sharing more with you guys very soon. Bye for now.